boom 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 hey guys welcome to another video um welcome 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 it's my guy it's your guy liked um so i just want to use today to just we're just going to talk about dreamers like i mean like dreams like when you wake up in the morning and you want to get something done you, you have this dream i want to be this i want to be that and god has blessed you and you just want to get those things done eventually in life by 20 something i want to be this 30 something i want to be that so here's my testimony on how i got my dreams like how my dreams got achieved because i because the dreams are mostly like a seed from god being sowed in our hearts knowing that we can do those things and they should come they should be a reality in life so here is my go-to text it's matthew chapter 10 verse 39 it says he that find it his life shall lose it and he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it so boom um first things first so like how did i how do how did i get all my dreams achieved so according to matthew chapter 9 verse 39 it says that if you want to find yourself you have to first lose yourself like when you lose yourself to the will of god you find yourself i know it sounds really weird because we always feel like we need that strong grip so let me just see. the story is really long sit down relax chill it's your boy right here it's, it's gonna take us some time you know just listen to my testimony i'm 25 i'm gonna be 26. one of the greatest miracles of my life since i was 22 i think i've always celebrated my birthday in a different city like my first birthday was in milwaukee second birthday was in california third birthday was in chicago i don't know where the next one is but like that's what i'm saying like my life is crazy like it's so blessed i am so blessed in so many different ways like god has been blessing me and opening doors for me but number one what i'm trying to say is this dreams 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 dreams, dreams. so i was i grew up in a very in a christian home with ambitious parents. My parents were very, very ambitious. They always did businesses and always started this thing and that thing. Like my mom at the age of like, my mom at the age of like um, 50 something started her school. You know, she started her own middle school and um, like in Nigeria, we call it secondary school, but it's like a middle school and a high school. My dad, they've been doing your really, really awesome people ambitious people so we've been a christian and we've been with being ambitious parents i had the spirit dwelling in me like you know god just blessed me and i just had crazy dreams although i cannot tell you everything now but i just had crazy dreams like crazy dreams to do this crazy dreams to do that one of the things that um i just wrote a couple things down that i want to do this i want to be able to travel the world when i was like less than 13 or something like that i, I want to be able to travel the world and do this in this part of the world and do that in the part of the world you know funny things like that so i wrote those kind of things down and and one of the things that happened was i wrote all those my dreams down at less than the age of 13 or something like that i, I it was it was so it was so wonderful like less than the age of 13 i wrote those dreams down i wrote um i wrote all those awesome dreams down then you know life grew up i became 16 and i looked at those dreams and i'm like that is so funny you know when you're a kid your mind is filled with so much impossibilities like you, you feel you can do everything because another thing that i just want to encourage is like when you are a kid too is like you life is simple like mommy and daddy says um mommy and daddy says oh we are going to the park and we're going to play and you go to the park and you're playing you're full with joy and like woo! we're going to the pool and we're going to swim and you're like you're full with joy and you want to swim awesome like you know your heart is filled with joy like as a kid you have you set the goals i'm going to play outside and you feel with joy but as you grow up and as adults and you want to like I want to buy a car and you find out the price of car is crazy high or I want to travel the world and you find out that oh it takes a lot of money and I want to do this so it's like crazy like when you grow up it begins to change you begin to morph your ideas and at the same time as you want to try and morph your satisfaction or your satisfaction levels you end up like just lowering your expectations lowering the things you want to do which is crazy because why can the bible promise us that through christ we can do all things and we are not leaving our dreams you know so back so that's the introduction to my testimony i want to tell you how god has blessed me and i'm leaving my dreams one two three go boom so like i said i was 16 um i 
I was about so in Nigeria we get done with college like if everything goes on time you get I mean we get done with high school but around some people even get as early as 15 but usually the average age is about 16 you get done with high school at the age of 16 so you get to go to college and be done by 21 that was a, I was praying to God I, I want to be done with college by 20 or 21 it depended I was I thought I was gonna do a four-year degree program so I was like Boom, 2021, I'm done. Like I was praying to God, first class degree, you know, blah, blah, blah. So let's get down to like um, college work. So I was 16, I got to college and this was in, um, the college is called, it's an agricultural school. So one of my dreams as a kid was I wanted to be a farmer. Like I wanted to own my own farm and grow crops and fix, you know, just fix an economy like an economic issue like i don't know if i'm saying it right but just grow farms and just you know grow i mean grow crops raise animals just have my own farm i've always wanted to be a farmer like people in my high school and middle school knew that they always called me a farmer i love the agriculture like so and god made sure that I went to college and I got my agricultural degree and I and I started in agriculture. So that was God working in my life and I'm like, boom, you know, that level is done. It's so easy for a lot of us. I know a lot of us fall into that bracket where we went, we want to be an accountant and we go to school and become an accountant, you know? Well, a lot of people, things flip because God works in mysterious ways. So like I said, I went to school, did, um, I was going, I started agriculture then, I started agriculture. It was my first year in college, and I was just chilling in college. I was looking at um, I had this mood swing. Like there was something going on. Like back in like high school, I didn't really have a lot of intimate friends. Like deep bonded friends. Like boom, boom. Like strong and tight. Like someone that was like almost like a soulmate. Like I needed. My soul was thirsting for like a deep soulmate. But at the end of the day, I I just realized I was thirsting for more of Jesus because only Jesus can meet you there. I had a good close friend, a couple of close friends, but I just needed someone who knew me for me, like who I didn't need to say much, but I just found out that I was needing Jesus. That's what I was needing. So, um, so back in college and I asked God and I was like, God, you know, I just looked at him like, God, I, I was always sincere with my relationship with God. Like I said, I grew up in a Christian family and the relationship with God was so intense. Like, you just needed to have it, you know? So, um, like, I, I just told God, I was like, God, what is, um, like, in the Bible, for every great person you made in the Bible, you changed your name. Like, Abram become Abraham, Abraham um, Jacob became Israel. For every great person in the Bible, um, Simon became Peter. Or is it the other way around? I don't know which is it. I'm sorry. But I'm like, everyone in the Bible, you change their name. Like, God, give me a new name. That's why it just started off. Like, God, give me a new name. And God, give me this name. It's called, it was, it's a three letter, I mean, three words. Not, because usually in the Bible, you get one name. But God gave me three names, you know. The latter shall be better than the former. So God gave me light blessing forever. This was back in 2009. I'll never forget. I was just in my college dorm in Federal University of Agriculture, Abekuta. So I was just chilling there and God just gave me that name. So I took my computer, I went to the cafe, to the cafe to just surf the net and I started a website, a blog. I said, like, bless forever. I took the blessing, I took the ING out. I'm like, that's so girly. But blessing was actually one of the names the nurse gave me when I was born. There's a woman who calls me blessing all the time. So that's one of the reasons why my name is Bless on um, Facebook. So, um... So right there and then, God changed my name and gave me that. But I wanted to go by Light, the first one he gave me. I asked, this was way back when I changed my school from Federal University of Agriculture at Bekuta. Um, I asked my friend, I'm like, I want to change my name to Light. What do you think about this? I said, oh, that's not cool enough. Like, I like your name, Bamzi, because my name, my Yoruba name is Uluwa Bami Bay. So people call me Bami Bay. Some people call me Bami. So, or Bams or Bibams or something like that. It was like really cool, Bibams. I'm like, that was just sounds really, really cool. But God was, I was like, I wanted to use the name God gave me, Light. But Light didn't seem cool enough, you know. Uh, you know, well, what's that? So but when I came to America, I changed my name to Light. Like, everyone calls me Light. So. So um, back to the whole story, like, so I was in University of, I mean, um, it is now FUNAB, no, it was UNAB before, now it's FUNAB. So I was in UNAB, and that's what we call it back then, for like three months, they told me I had to leave, that um, 
that I did not have physics in my um, YEC. So YEC is the final exams you do from high school. So one of those exams you needed to enter college back in Nigeria. So they told me I did not have physics, da 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 da, da and I prayed. God knows I prayed. I like during my final years uh, uh, in high school, I heard of people who sit at home for one year doing nothing. That they cannot get to school, you know, things don't work out for them. So all that time I prayed to God. I know I literally I prayed. I like told God, I am not sitting at home for one year. I I I am not going to be at home for one year. I'm not going to fail jam. Jam is also one of the final exams you're going to write to enter high school. I'm not going to fail jam. I'm not going to fail Wayek, Neko, anything. That every single thing I need to enter college, I am going to do it. So I told God, like God, in the name of Jesus, I prayed several nights to, because it was the biggest fear of my life. Like I did not want to because I felt like one of the biggest fears of my life was waking up without the purpose as a young teenager like how am I going to live this life waking up without a purpose like how am I going to do it that it won't make sense at all like living this life without a purpose so I told God that I did not want this for my life that I wanted because waking up without a purpose like you have to wait the whole year to write the exam again you have to do this like your life is just aimless I just felt my life would be aimless if I did not get into college so I just prayed so hard and God opened doors like I, the 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 my testimony of how I got to UNAB it's I mean and the whole thing like literally in when I was in UNAB and I prayed and all that it was so bad that God answered my prayer so well I say so bad like the way I don't know 21st century we use bad like good it was so good that my dad was one of the people who was going to interview me like he was one of the people that he put on the panel team because you go through a screening like was part of the people that was going to interview me to get into college my dad was like there is no way i'm going to interview my son to get into college because you got to you had to be screened like that was how good god answered my prayers like you need to pray we we always feel in the power of prayer like prayer should be mixed in with worship and, and things like that so just listen to my testimony i i want to be i want to intensify the building blocks of christian faith like prayer fasting worship but just listen to how i pray how i say i prayed how i say i worship and just use it like that i may not take time to explain each one so my dad was also someone that when i was when we when i was young and all that he would take time and like shout on us and scream at us i'm like this was my first bible this is the first bible i bought in over 20 years this is the first bible i bought after then i started using the bible on my phone but my bible like my dad would be shouting like read your bible he was the one that i was always buying bibles for us i first started using kjv i love the kjv it's the best like my dad would like shout so i had this intimate relationship with god and god just started answering my prayers like that i knew the word of god like i said how i got my name was through reading the word of god i was familiar with the word of god and going to a great church with sunday school and all that shout out to rema chapel so um so what happened was my dad was part of the people that was going to interview me and he said like no way you know that and that and that but after all that i just saw the wonderful works of god and they told me that i had to go then i remember one man that said something that um you go through i can't remember the words he said but you go through trials so you can have a story and give glory to god something weird like that but they just told me i had to go home there was a lot of people we were trying to talk to, important people in the school were trying to like, come on, he has worked hard and all that, he can't go home. So I had to just take my pack my bags and I went home. So I just went home like two or three nights at home. I can't even remember, I don't think it was that long. It was just a couple of nights, like the next day or the second day. Then we got this call that my, um, we had relatives in, um, a real a lecture of a relative of our family was going to be elect was like a lecturer in another school so in this school is so the school i went to at first was the federal it was like a federal school in the in the state ogun state ogun state is one of the states in nigeria for all those of my american friends watching so um it's one of the states in america i mean i said america wouldn't that be nice one of the states in nigeria so ogun state so there's the federal school which i went to then they kicked me out after three months and said i should go home then i went to osu shout out to my people great osuites we're always there man so like so like so i went to osu like i know osu i went there for seven years i was meant to be there for five that is one of the delimars of going to a public school <laughs> 
<laughs> so one of the reasons why I went to public school was because we thought that I was going for agriculture and private schools were not so good. They were just starting and they were not so good with um, agriculture then. Like they were not so experienced. Like I heard students from other private schools were actually spending a year in the federal school I went, I started in. We'll spend like a year or six months there. So it's just to get stuff ready and to know more and stuff like that. So it was better I went to public school because not all the schools were perfect in agriculture yet. So like I said, I went to Osu and honestly osu was not the best choice for my family like man it was it was not the, i'm sorry i'm serious i'm serious i went to that school and it was not like the best choice ever this is why i say this is one thing i just want to try i want you guys to trust god in the issues of your life like um it was like for instance if god takes you through a tunnel like if God takes you through several places, you need to just trust God in it. Because no more mind thinking, if like, if we had all the resources in the world, we would not have picked that school. But I did not want to sit at home for one year. And Osu was open then. Like, there was still, admin, there was a diploma program going on there. So I could not, so I could go there and not sit at home. We didn't like it. I, I just took it and I went with it. But I won't lie to you, it was where I met God. I'm like, people were, and, and a lot of people were actually shocked at my faith. Like, man, you, your Christian faith is so good. And I'm like, and they say like, you went to Osu of all places. Like, I mean, like your Christian faith is so strong. And you're like, of all places that your faith improved, did you not go to Covenant? Yeah, Covenant is one of the strongest. Like when you send children there, they become, I know friends. I have friends that went to Covenant and their faith is like off the roof. They are so awesome. But, like, you do not send children to Osu and they become, like, pastors and ministers. It's the other way around. They become cultists, fraternity members. They sleep around. They have children. You know, but that's what I said. Like, when God takes you through something, no, he will get you through. Just trust him. Like, trust his plan. So, God took me to Osu, which was, like, I, I wasn't planning. I wasn't planning, you know, to be in Asko. And um, I was in Asko and God just blessed me. So it was the second, I think it was the next year in doing the diploma program. So we're meant to do this, listen, no, we're meant to do a diploma program for one year. We ended up doing it for two years because of strike. So strike is when the government does not pay your lecturers and they decide to like, we're done. We are not coming to work again. So like, so the, so yeah, we're meant to do it for one year. We ended up doing it for two, two good years. God have mercy. So like, um, so we started doing it for two years, but I thank God for strike. Like the strike built my Christian faith. It made me who I am. It gave me opportunities. Like one of the things I noticed people do here in, especially in America, like kids take break from like, oh, they, after they're done with high school, they take one year off to just think about life and reflect and see other opportunities before they go to school next year. Even in Nigeria, too, I had friends that did that too. Um, kids or they, we even within a college year, like they go to school for like two years and they take a break and I'm like, I just want to reflect on life. So I had three months strike here. We never, throughout my whole time in Osu, I cannot, we only had one time we had a like a serious break. Like this was holiday. They called it the holiday. Like they really truly gave us this one. Um, they literally gave us like a holiday, like a two weeks break after an exam to get back to um, school, to start another semester. But other than that, in Osu, usually our holiday was a strike. Like you get three months strike there, boom. Four months strike there, six months. One was six months. One was three months. It was, there, was no, there was no weeks. It was just months. We had months being thrown at us here and there, here and there. So I started the school at 2009. I think nine. I finished 2015. Kind of, it was kind of 2015, but I officially had my set graduated, officially graduated at 2016. You can see how many years it took to just get out of that school, but I thank God. So, like I said, testimony, I'm just, I'm getting so emotional. I've not had time to really break down and talk about this Osu thing. So, <laughs> oh my God, it's so funny. So, um, so after like after spending two i mean being two years in a diploma program so one day in 2010 which changed my life forever 2010 
will be like the best time, best year of my life that my Christian faith grew. Because like I said, as a dreamer, as a Christian dreamer, you need a grip of life on life. And, and, um, you need to hear God and know what he's saying and just do what he's telling you to do. So in 2010, I was, I had this friend of mine and listen, friends are for seasons because this friend I had in 2010, after like a couple years later or months later, I had to do away with him and change friends. Like I had to literally like get out of the way. And, but this was a friend that I, that God used to help me connect with destiny. But you need to understand that because if someone helped you so well to connect your life to destiny, it doesn't mean you will stick with that person forever. I'm like, seriously. So it's just one of the things coming to my mind now. So this friend of mine, we, he always goes to class early, like every time. Early, he's super early. So I was like, you know, he was the first person that was living close to where I was living. Like I, they started a diploma program earlier than I did. I came in. So I came in, I just came in a week before they were going to do start exams. That was when I came in. So I started copying notes, you know, getting lecture notes and all that so that I could, so I could like start the exam. So, so we were just going to class. He, like I said, it was going early. Then we just got to class. We we're waiting on our lecturer to come to class. And he told me that, I mean, as because I was with him, I always had to go to class early because left to me, I would just come probably five minutes to time or whatever it is. But the, this guy came in, there was this guy who just came in and he came in the paperwork, it just like a little paper. He just said one thing. He said, um, you guys, you guys, hey, listen, um, can I get your names down? Um, um, I'm, I have, I'm making a list of people I just want to, to just go and apply to, to do their masters abroad. Like, do you want to do it in America? And I'm like, I don't know. What is that? So you need to understand something. I come from a good upbringing so i did not grow up in a place where everyone fantasized and saw united states uk as the land of i don't know we saw it as it's a good place you know travel there for vacation and things like that awesome amen hallelujah you know you just go there for vacation my mom used to go there when she was young we had families we have family members in uk we have been there as a family to the uk so i understand like like it's okay, you know, I get it, like, but we, there's a way, there's a way people used to dream, like, like, I see it everywhere, so I'm not going to be, feel like superficial and feel like, oh, I'm this rich guy that thinks that um, US is just one place like that. No, it's a good place. It's a good economy. It's, 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 things are figured out here, you know, I know it's awesome, but like, I did not fantasize on it, like as a kid growing up and as being a young adult, like, I just think it was just a place, but I did not feel like my dreams needed me to be on a plane, needed to be achieved in another country. I just felt like if I trust God, work hard in my country and things will go well. So like this guy just wrote my name down on the list. Um, this guy just wrote my name down on a list with a couple other people and he said, hey, like, you know, when you're done with your college work, you can just go there for your master's. Like you can go abroad for your master's and things like that. So I just like, okay, don't really care about it, you know? So the guy wrote my name down, 2010. I totally forgot about it. The guy wrote my phone number, my name, and my email. So those three things he got. As a teenager, I lost, the only thing I didn't lose was my name. I lost the phone number and I lost the email. No, I had the email, but I didn't, you know, I changed my email. So I was using Gmail, I was, that was Yahoo. I put it on, it was Yahoo I was using at that time. So I took that in Yahoo, I just changed everything. Like teenager, who, what's my business? When I'm not making money from it or something like that. So I just changed, everything changed. So 2010, all gone, boom, it's all gone. So, like I said, 2010 again, we had, in Rema Chapel, we had what we call, this is the church I go to in Nigeria, we have what we call camp. So, which is a camp thing too, we also do here too in my church. I did it with my middle schoolers, like junior secondary school kids in Nigeria, we call them. Like middle schoolers would go to a camp for like three, four days. So, we had camp meeting for teenagers, like at the age of... Just teenagers, you just go to camp for next four or five days. I mean, for next three to four days and you just know God. It's awesome experience. You're not with your mom, you're not with your dad. You can be honest with your teachers. You can confess your sins. There's a revelation of God. For three, four days, you're like straight up, the Holy Ghost is like booming in. So they organized this thing called Truth Behind Hip Hop. Like 
they did this video and it was like about truth behind hip hop. Um, what it was trying, what that video was all about was, um, it was all about telling us the bads of Hollywood, like how Hollywood serves the devil, how major characters in Hollywood serve the devil. And God just used that thing to touch my heart because my mom has been telling me like especially my mom my mom and my dad but my mom especially has been telling me like dude the things you are watching uh man i don't like them the songs you're listening to i don't like them i was filled with the spirit of rebel like i was listening to all these nasty things that's why i tell people please be careful of what you watch be careful of i don't watch tv these days like i don't i turned off my television like i don't I, like when i started leaving by myself i don't i don't subscribe to cable because of things like that but other than that but other than that it was just that um my um what's the word so we went to this camp meeting and and um we got this revelation truth behind hip-hop how the hollywood is serving satan and i was so deep into all the songs and all that i just like you know confessed my sins to you know we we as young people just confess our sins to each other and i'm like man this thing's really taking a stronghold in our hearts so I went, I started deleting songs, men, gigs, gigs, like gigs of gigs of gigs of um, all the songs I had to throw away. So I threw all those things away, like I threw all those songs away. And 2010, I will not forget, that was when God began to use me. So 2010 was when God began to really use, this, there was a manifestation of the Spirit of God in my life, like in 2010. So that was when I always... Before 2010, throughout my life, I always sang. Like, I would just write small songs and just write it down. You know, just little, little songs, you know, write with rhythm. I always thought I was a rapper, so I will try and freestyle whenever I can. You know, little things like that. So I just went to church 2010. Like I said, my school was on strike. So I thank God for strike. Strike was the best thing ever in my life that helped my destiny. Like I say, when you hold on to God in every situation, that he just uses the things that were meant to bring you down, to bring you up. So God uses strike. So my school was on strike. I went to church. Then I saw one girl and another guy. They were practicing. We had a teenager's church. So in that teenager's church, they was, um, there was... There um, was... The, in the teenagers' church, there there was there were people doing praise service, praise and worship service. So I went there, and I was they were practicing for praise and worship on Sunday. And I said, "Hey, children!" I mean, like I told them, like I told the the boy and the girl. I said, "Like, hey, this is back, like I said, back in Rama Chapel Yaba." So I told the boy and the girl that we're practicing for praise and worship. I'm like, "We are going to have a Christmas party." So we usually have Christmas. Like, there's always a Christmas party for the kids, for the teenagers in church. So I, I told them, um, I said, hey, why don't you guys, let's do something for teenagers party. I mean, like, I will write a song. No, not this. They will pick a worship song. Then there will be a rap in between and there will be a song in between. Then, I mean, like, just like, you know, the way a song sounds on the radio. Just the song, the rap, and the song. So I said, I will rap, then you guys will sing. Then there was this song by Sinatch called, I want more of you, Jesus. So Sinatch was singing, there was, that song was, like, awesome then. Like, so, um, so Sinatch was singing that song, and I was like, it's a good worship song. We can write rap and sing you know and they said well oh, the, the girl was like oh it's pretty good and then this was the best this this was how i knew this boy that helped my life as a as a musician like as a live performer emmanuel so the girl i was talking to said my cousin is a rapper you should talk to him about this thing so that was when i met emmanuel emmanuel for those in nigeria you guys know emmanuel from my church you know him so that was how i met emmanuel so we me and emmanuel me and emmanuel started writing songs together we started you know that was how god used me because i left the world alone like god like i will never forget 2010 rema chapel international churches teenagers camp when i left the world alone that was when i made a significant step it just started and there was still a lot of things going on in my life but it just started then and god just when the, when i just decided to like no more worldly music no more no more things like i loved i was so into these songs like crazy like i was crying when michael jackson 
person died my mom said are you okay is something wrong with you like you are acting so cynical about this michael jackson thing like stop stop it it's it's even becoming freaky like my mom was like thing like that so I, I just thank god like i really do thank god that god just saved my life from from things like that because those guys were occultic they were using occultic power to make money and fame and they, you don't the funny thing we don't know about this worldly guys is they sow demonic spirits in us when we listen to their songs they just sow spirits spirits like all kinds of demonic evil spirits that when you are when you are full with these demonic spirits god cannot communicate with you he cannot manifest with you he cannot manifest his spirit with you he cannot he cannot show you visions and dreams and goals and ambitions like i'm showing showing you throughout this video you're going to see how my dreams came to reality how i'm living a life of dreams like god is just so good so like i said so I, like I said, I don't want to talk too much about the building blocks of Christian faith. I just want you to see the, I want you to see the manifestation of living for Jesus. So like I said, we're writing these songs. We sang, this was the one that blew my mind away. So the church for like three, four years were, was always inviting us to come and, you know, do the, be like the opening performance or the closing performance for their concerts. So like while we are the opening or closing performance for the next three, four years, um, while we're at the opening or closing performance for the next three, four years, they were inviting great artists. They invited Mike Aremu, Mike Abdul. These were great musicians in Nigeria. They invite my people. I wasn't there, but they ministered alongside Nathaniel Bassi. You know, there was just a lot of people that I'm like, I can write in my career, like, oh, because it's really important in your credentials as a musician, like, oh, I ministered alongside. You know, this great person, I ministered alongside that great person. So I kept on doing these things for a while, for a while, for a while, for a while, just singing, jumping up and run down. Uh, you know, when you start singing like that and people are inviting you, obviously start thinking of when I'm going to get an album, when I'm going to be, you know, like the regular artist. But God had a different plan for me. So I was chilling one day and I don't know why my mom called me. Maybe she, she thought this person sounded like a rapper that she listened to her. But my mom called me and I thank God for my mom. I love my mom. She's the best. So she called me and she said she was watching Turning Point on TV. Then she called me aside and said, come and see this thing on TV. It was Turning Point. It was a lady doing poetry. They call it spoken word. Now everyone knows spoken word, but then spoken word was not popular. So she called me and she said, look at this thing. And I looked at it and I'm like, I can do that because I know I used to write poetry. Like I just write, like I said, I used to write songs and things like that. So I just knew that I could also write poetry too. So um, I, I was like, I can write that. I mean, I can do that. I can do that. So again, you see how God just uses, when we create a venue for young people, God just does his own thing. He just does his own thing. So again, I went back to my Grandma Chapel's Children's Church Christmas party. I mean, Teenager's Party, not Children's Church. No, our Teenager's Party. So our church has, like I said, Teenager's Party. That was when I first did my own song. And, and I mean, that was when I first started the band. It's called Inspire. People know us in church as Inspire back in Rema Chapel. So we started this thing called Inspire. So, so like, that's how Inspire started. And they inviting us to the concerts. So, like, I said, oh, I can do this thing. So I wrote... I wrote a poem, like a poetry, like a spoken word. We are at war. I wrote that poem and I went to the church downstairs and I'm like, I can do it. So instead of me just doing it by myself, I also invited the drama department to do it as well. And I said, you know what? I'm going to say these words. You guys will act it. So boom, there was an avenue to launch my talent out and I did it. I'm so grateful for my church. Like Rema Chapel International Church is Yaba. I am so, I love, 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 love you guys. I love you. Every single person that was part of my coaching team, my teachers, my everybody. Like I'm seeing, I think Uncle Tosin right now watching. I love you guys. Like these were part of people that helped my destiny. So like, um, so we went there and I, I did a spoken word and you know, I just left it alone. I just, I was just writing here and then when I could, I would just write, I would watch videos of other artists, other Christian artists. It's an art that is predominantly dom dominated by Christians, which is one thing I thank God for, spoken word. It's dominated mostly by Christians. So, um, or the best ones are done by Christians too as well. So I just started this thing, just like spoken word. It is what it is, you know. Then fast forward 2013, 
after a couple years in ministry, this young teenager running up and down, being passionate. So this is one of the things I want to talk about. Like when God gives you a dream, you need to put everything aside and focus on it. So I was in college and I was doing, I was in college, I was coming to Lagos. I loved IT. So during my, um, during all the strikes, like I said, I thank God for the strikes. I'll keep on saying it again because that was where God manifested. He manifested when I was in school. He manifested during my time of the strikes. So um, when I was in strike, like during the strike thing, when during when the teachers were at strike and we were we had to leave school and go home, I went home and I started an IT part-time program. Like I was learning, trying to learn IT, networking, website building, all those funky stuff. I was learning and I was doing, uh, like I gradually started doing the big stuff. But God forgive me, I did not pay too much attention to that thing. I was paying more attention to Inspire. And my parents, God have mercy, my parents spent a lot of money on that thing. I, that's my, one of the confessions I have to make from a youth. I, that was one, I won't say a mistake, but it was just not serious. I, I took it seriously. I took it seriously. But I felt I have this higher scale on which I put myself. And I'm like, you should have done, done better. But God bless me. So, um, so like I said, I was um, doing the Inspire thing and all that. So when school resumed, this is the thing. So when school resumed... My school was three hours away from where I lived. I lived in Lagos and my school was in Ogun State. So I lived three hours away. And because I lived three hours away, what should I do? Should I forget my band, Inspire, and just focus on school? But no, God was like, no, keep working. So I had an IT program in Lagos. So my dad was not like, fine. My dad, because while I was less busy, my parents were like, why don't you start an IT program? And you'll be coming on weekends to finish up your program. So I said, okay. So while I was coming home from school to the house, three hours every weekend, every weekend, I was coming, um, I was coming home. I was coming, sorry, what's the word? I was coming home three hours every weekend to do uh, my part-time program. I mean, to do my part-time program in IT. I also had the opportunity on Sundays to meet with my band. Hooray! So I was meeting with my band on Sundays, and I'm like, do my IT program on Saturdays or Sundays as well. Then I still kept on burning. And one of the things that happened was my pastor, Pastor Caleb, and I love you, Pastor. So he created an opportunity. He said, Thanksgiving service, you guys can come and sing. Like, so every last Sunday of the month, we had a Thanksgiving service. So he said, you guys can come and sing. So the, you know, the fire kept burning and burning and burning and burning. So I was just, kept, we just kept on singing. But the group was like asking, like, we were asking ourselves this thing, like, do we continue just roaming around in one spot? Like one spot. We are just going on stage. We are singing. Like, there's not, like, usually like when you start things like that you just your mind is your heart is on the next level like when are we going to go to the studio or get the record deal you know be like other people but one thing i noticed was that we were in college we're not ready for that kind of a thing we're not ready to become big stars and art because if those people were to invest money in us and we had the record deal we will not be able to be there we had to quit school so god kept us all locked in although people left People had to leave because I felt that we should just be in one place like the way the apostles were in the book of Acts and waiting for the manifestation of the Spirit of God. We just needed to be in a particular place and just trust God and see what happens. But people left. Almost everyone, the member, I mean, the team had left and changed. Members kept on changing on me. Like, I was the only person for like three, four years. But people had to leave. Also, some people had to also grow too. Some people had grew. Their talent had grew. Like, Emmanuel's talent had grew from where we were. Like, we were just, you know, just in a play. But his talent had grew. And he was in Unilag. So, he had, had a, bigger, a bigger platform to talk on and be on. But I was just there. So while I was just there and God just, um, so while I was there, God just used me and mind Tilly and all that. So all that kind of stuff. So like I said, 2013, another strike again. So we were strike back in school. It was just going back and forth. So 2013, I think it was one of the longest, longest strike or something like that. So we were meant, this is another one again, we're meant to be, it's called a practical year, 400 level. In agriculture, like when you spend when on your fourth year in in agriculture, 
you were meant to spend um sorry one second i need to check on something i'll be right back So in our year four, so in our year four, we're meant to spend one whole year with doing practical stuff. Like all the things we learned in the classroom, we're meant to spend it, like go and be with the farmers. Like, like I said, I went to school for agriculture. So as an, I was a more of an animal scientist. Some people were learned crops, some people learned soil. You know, just go on the, pra on the field and be practical. Like you go there and apply all that you have learned. And one of the things we did was like, we went out there to just do stuff. So within that year, within that, our year four, there was another strike for like six months. So I had to, the thing was just going on forever. Like our practical year was just going forever. But I remembered one thing. So my parents always took us to, my parents always took us to Holy Ghost Camp in Redeem. So Redeem is one of the greatest ministries that help my Christian faith too. Like one thing as a Christian is you can't just, you cannot focus your life on your local church only. You just have to eat from everywhere. There's a, God is manifesting himself everywhere. That's why I use online platform. YouTube is the greatest resource. Like listening to different ministers of God. It's so good and such a blessing. So I went to Redeem. So we go to Redeem once a month once a month, the first Friday of the month. So we go there. So I remember the Congress, they were going to have, there's one that they do during the summer, during August, like they call it, I don't know if it's Congress or convention, they call it, but the title was Jesus. So the title of that stuff was going to be Jesus. And Baba Gio, the man who runs the, I mean, the, the pastor, the, the general of Asia, the man who runs the place, he said one thing, he said, only real Christians, only serious minded Christians will come for this week of convention. And I titled Jesus, like this is the bone cracking Christians. And you know, every time this man preaches, Bawajio, we always go to his camp when we can. My parents, we try to go every month. So when we can so every time i listened to him i just felt he was of such high standards like i wanted to be like him but i always felt like i was down here and he was up there and i just felt like i want to be like him like be as holy as he is be as perfect as he is be as righteous i like i wanted something like that but when he said something like bone cracking christians would be here and i'm like hmm Bone crack. What what is he going to preach about? I want. I've never heard that kind of thing before. Bone cracking. Like you know, like in the book in the Bible when Paul was writing to the Corinthians or Thessalonians. I can't remember who was writing to, but he said some of you are still like children feeding on milk or something about like you need to eat meat or bones. You know something like that. So I was like bone cracking Christian. I'm like I must be there. So like I said, rewind. So remember I told you something about there was another strike in 2013, I think. I don't know if it's 12 or 13. I think it's mostly 13. There was this strike in our practical year. And I said, and I'm, I'm like, okay, there's a strike going on. Perfect. Um, we, we, it was a practical year, but the classrooms were closed, but practical students were like still working and all that. You know, I was like, I made up my mind. I was going for this, um, Jesus convention, like this convention that this man was, this bone cracking convention that he was talking about. And I made up my mind, I'm like, I'm going there. Like, this school is not going on. We are just here working and working and working. Like, I just said, you know, bye bye. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going. Like, I just left my classmates. I never, I, so I went, usually I used to go home for the weekend for my IT program in Lagos. So I just said, you know what? I'm done. Like, I'm going. So I went for a weekend and I never came back for like a week. I'm like, you guys just keep working. Cause I heard rumors of like when strike is going, like in previous sets that have been there, I heard like when there's a strike going on, the people, your practical lecturers will just keep using you. And I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to keep on doing this. So I just went and I was like bone cracking Christians conference. I was just there. I was just chilling, you know, just enjoying the presence of God. I was ready. I remember we're trying to look, my dad was trying to hook me up to find a room to sleep in, you know, a place to sleep in, to eat, you know, somewhere to lie down and sleep in and shower. And I'm like, screw that. I'm a student. I don't care. I'll just take my bag. I'll sleep on the chairs overnight because 
we are going to be there for five days. So there were bathrooms everywhere you could shower. There were places you could eat. You just needed to find a place to sleep. I'm like, the place was big enough. And I'm like, I'll sleep on the floor. I don't care. I just want to be part of this bone cracking convention. So, so, um, we said, so he said, I mean, so I was just there and there was this guy who was with me. I remember him. We were praying for his, like they, there was a sermon that was being preached and we we're praying for his family or his mother and there was something bad going on it scared me like oh my gosh you know like you have people coming from different works of life and i think this was someone who came from some village somewhere who was attacked spiritually and i was just like 19 or 20 or something like that and i'm hearing things of like demonic attack my brother has died my mother they want to kill my mother and i'm like we pray in the name of jesus we, just, you know, we prayed so we prayed we just pray and at the end of the whole thing he said do you want to go to the youth now pay attention to this thing he said do you want to go to the youth center so they had a youth center during the day during the convention so the convention starts from like 6 p.m to dawn like so around 12 or 5 i mean so around 12 a.m 2 a.m how, how the holy spirit leads so it starts from 6 p.m to like 12 a.m., 1 a.m. So we just go, different programs. They organize different lots of things, different speakers, worship, sermons. I mean, it's powerful. I love these things. So like, so during the day, there's nothing going on. I mean, they have a couple of conferences here and there, you know, different seminars here and there. So this guy was like, do you want to go to the youth center? Like they have the youth go there and they just, I'm like, youth center, what is that? You know, I'm not, I don't, I only come here once a month. I've never really been here for one, a whole week before. So uh, maybe just once in a while when my dad just brings us for like three days and takes us back, brings us back, you know, back and forth. For, so I was like, okay, let's go there. So we went there, we are at this youth center and we're just chilling, you know. And this guy just came on stage and said, if you have a talent, stop. Like if you have a talent, um, stay behind after everyone leaves and we and um, we hear your talent and um, you could minister on stage now this is the big one i came by myself i think like i told you i was in a band before i had my group inspire but remember when i said my mom taught i mean showed me something on tv and i started working on it as well you see this is one of the important things as a parent to just invest in the spirit of god invest yourself in the spirit of god make sure your children are in the spirit of God and just trust God. I know children can be crazy sometimes. Like, look, I gave my parents trouble, like growing up, like night now, everyone is saying I'm a good person, but like I literally gave them trouble. So like God just helped us out. So like I said, remember my mom said something about something on TV and I worked on it and I started ministering in my church. So I just, that was the only poem I had. And that was the only thing I could do by myself because I could not sing by myself. I could not rap by myself. I could not go with my songs. I was just by myself. And my other fellow guy had started doing things by himself. He was a uni lag. And I felt like, you know, God bless you. Just start something by yourself. So I went to these people and I did my spoken word. We are at war. The Christian faith is at war. What teenagers are doing this and people are doing this, you know. And this guy was like, I would I I recorded that show and I will put it in the link of this comment so you can see the first spoken word I ever did by myself. So I did that spoken word by myself and I, I like I showed my talents to the people running the place. And listen, here is this thing. The president of the youth fellowship was like looking at me and was and he said something like, Why are there a lot of you people? Who told you people to wait behind? I don't know who sent that guy to tell people who are talent to wait behind. I don't know why did he do that? Like why did he say that? Look at a lot of people. I'm down now with a lot of people. I'm like, I was just like, ah, it's okay. Now, this is one of the big deal here. I knew someone. It's, he's always he's always liking my stuff on Facebook now. Papi Sam, Papi Sam was one of our people in Osu. This is when listen. This is I just want you to connect to something. When God puts you somewhere, please do not be too proud to be where God puts you in. Like part of it, like during the strikes in Osu, we're contemplating of changing schools. Like my mom was like, you know, why don't you just go to Ghana or somewhere and just spend three years there? You know, like. This thing is taking too long. You were meant to be done with school by 2013 or so. You are still in school. You are still in school. Like, you need, let's change this. My dad said something. You have started it and you will finish it. So, 
just continue. So Papi Sam was one of, he goes to OVCF. He was one of the men who lead, led, who led the Bible study of student fellowship in OVCF. He was there. So he saw me like one of the people who waited behind. He waited behind to, um, to show our talents. And he gave me VIP treatment. He was like, wait, I will connect to you. I would, you know, I'll take care of you. What do you want to eat? What do you want to drink? Just wait. You will do your talents. Don't worry. I'll make sure he sees your show and something like that. Da, 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 and that. So I was like, okay, I just, I just, um, I just said, fine. It's so I just, and I did my poetry, like the, the, um, president of the youth fellowship. I mean, the youth fellowship was like, wow, that is good. I like that. His name is Bello. So he was like, man, I like that. I like that. I like that. He said, why don't you do it like this? You know, change it up, spice it up a bit. Do p Put this and that. Put people's names in here. You know, fine-tune it this way. Fine-tune it that way. I, I like what you're doing. So I was like, okay. I fine-tuned it. Listen, like, I, remember I said, um, so Papi Sam, Papi Sam took me under his wings. Like, he gave me a place to sleep in. Like, he gave me just a place to, like, you know, just a place to sleep in, you know, just like a little room to put my head on before I went back to camp, a place to shower, like just a little room, like where a couple of guys were already. So he told me to like, you know, you can just hang out with us here for a minute. So, so we were, we just hung, hung out there for a minute. So like when I was there, that was when, like, so I told you I had to do a show and I didn't plan on doing going on stage i just planned to just enjoy jesus in this convention that was when i sharply like i i know dumb myself like i know the school where i came from you know i'm sorry you know you just put your sense inside so like i just quickly took some shoes there i just saw some guy with some shoes there i mean i saw a pair of shoes i quickly just borrowed it and went on stage and because I, I came with some pair of really big ugly sandals then with me so i just took some shoes there and i just did my show and um on stage the president of the youth fellowship was like wow i love your stuff like you did it everybody loved it i made sure everyone shouted jesus there was a way i did the poetry and everyone just shouted jesus at the end of it like it was wow it was mind-blowing everyone loved it i was like oh my god this is so good so that was nice. So like everyone loved it. And the guy running the place said, he said something. He said, would you like on Fridays, the last day of the convention, they organize, they organize, um, what's it called? They organize like a, just like a few hours for the youth to just minister, sing songs, you know, preach, do their talent. So this guy said, I want you to be on stage. The president of the youth fellowship was like this was the big stage where the convention was and he was like i want you to be on stage and say your talent and do your stuff like don't worry about it just go there and do it and i was like oh wow that 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 is interesting you know i was like oh my gosh i'm going to now this is it like you remember when i always said like Papa Gio was up here and i was down here and i was just chasing on and i feel like i won't, I won't say we're on the same like I feel I don't feel anymore like I'm down here and he's up here anymore. I just feel like yes, I'm I'm on the same page with on him with him now. So Papa Gio was going to minister that same night on that same stage I was going to minister on. I'm like, that is mind blowing. This was still during the strike thing. I'm like, that is just mind blowing. Like, this is a man I've always looked up to, and someone is going to give me help me like put me a few minutes on the same stage as someone I saw in from a far distance, someone greater than I am, amazing. And it was so, like, that's the biggest blessing for me on that day. You know, my day was done. I was already done. So I went on that stage and I just, you know, did my poetry. Like I said, when I was young, I always dreamt of being a superstar, like a rapper, musician, getting a record deal, doing stuff around the world, knowing people, just even in my country. I don't even care. Just Nigeria alone is fine for me. I don't need to be around, you know, things like that. And these things were already happening. This is another thing you need to pay attention to. Like when David was anointed king, he was so humble enough to still be a shepherd boy. So he was still humble enough to be a servant to the king. So when, when God was manifesting through me and I was singing alongside, remember I said in my church, they invite big artists to come and we either do opening or closing um, show for them. 
Like they invite us to also be on stage. And I was also ministering alongside Daddy Jew. I did not just become proud and arrogant and like, where's the money, you know? I just was just humble. I was just humble and God, whatever you give me, I will take. I am grateful. You are blowing my mind right now. So I ministered that night in, um, in the church and it was great. It was awesome. I enjoyed it. It was... It was the best thing of my whole life. I called my mom, my dad. Everyone came. They brought clothes for me because I didn't plan to be on stage. But they brought clothes for me, shirt and tie, shoes and everything. Then I was just chilling. So in October of that, in October of that year, the president of the fellowship told me, do you want to also come and minister for the October youth conference? Like the youth has a conference and do you want to minister there? Like, are you available? I'm like, sure, I will do it. But he said, at the same time, I just want to tell you something. That somebody has been looking for you. That in 2000, I mean, like he has been looking for you. He said, You're, you applied to the U.S. and the U.S. thing worked out. That he wants to see you. Okay, let me say one thing again. The president of the Youth Fellowship also said one thing to me when I was ministering. He told me something. He said, say your name. Like, say your full name. Usually, it doesn't make sense. Like, my name is da 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 and I'm here to do da 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 You know, you just go there and do your administration. I, I don't know, for you, most of you guys who watch shows, you don't hear people say their name. You, you know, your name just appears there. But the Spirit of God was so strong. He said, say your name. So I just said my name. In 2013, I think it's 13, 2013, I was like, say your name. So I said my name there. Then, then he told me, he said, like the youth president told me that someone is looking for me. Someone is looking for me that, that's, that I applied to the U.S. with him a while ago and he wants to see me now. So I don't know for you guys who joined along in 2010, let me just remind you what happened in 2000, I mean, 2010. 2010, I was going to class and someone just said, there was in between all the strike and all this in the school I did not want to be in and the school I didn't plan on going to. I was doing a diploma program for two years in Osu. Like, so in, um, I just wrote my name down. Remember, I wrote my name down. I wrote my phone number. And I wrote my email. I lost the email and the Phone number, but the name was still the same. Amen. <laughs> so this guy was like, well, what's your, I mean, like, um, the president of the youth fellowship was like, this person is looking for you, that this is his phone number, get his phone number down. So I got his phone number down. I thought it was a scam. Honestly, I thought it was like, just, you know, like, I just thought it was a scam. Someone take my money and things like that. So he's told me that, oh, yes, um, someone is, Someone is looking for you. And I and I said, wow, that is awesome. So I went, I was like, woohoo, I got that. I was just excited for nothing. I like, I was, to get, when the president of the youth fellowship, I remember that time he called, I mean, I called him. No, he called me and I told him all that. I mean, he told me all the things that, and I was like so excited. I was like, okay, I was excited. Like, woohoo, application to US worked out. I'm like, okay, awesome. And I went to go and meet him. I was not... I was not like super excited like I, my mind wasn't blowing like and I think it's one of the things about being a Christian like when you serve God to the very like you're so intimate with God nothing can you'll be happy for things that happen in your life but nothing can blow your mind that you want to almost lose your mind like you're like ah oh, ah yeah woo ah. like I was happy but I was I was like Okay, you know, like, God was so much enough for me. Like, I felt so fulfilled with my relationship with God. I did not have cars. I did not have houses. I did not have money. I did not even have a relationship then. I didn't, you know, my life was just, so I was just, okay, I don't know what this thing is, but God, if you bring it for me, I'll chase it. So this guy just came, and I went to meet the guy. He was like, okay, you, you, you applied to the U.S. It worked out. And I said, okay. I went to the embassy, to the U.S. embassy then, and they were like, okay, and they stamped my passport, and they were like, you're going to the U.S., and I'm like, okay, <laughs> I'm serious, I'm just like, okay, then my, this was, look, when God gives you something, sometimes we should just always connect ourselves to what he is saying. That you do not get carried away and miss the golden opportunity. Like, I was so committed to my degree program. I'm like, God, this is the plan. Like, I, this was what he has done for me. So I felt this was the plan of God for me. Get into your degree program. Work hard. 
during your NYSC year, so our NYSC year is a year we serve our country. We, we, we just give back to our country during our year, like when you're done with college, you just give back to your country. So I felt it was during my NYSC year, I would focus on my IT, work hard, get my IT diploma, because I was also working on a diploma in getting an IT certificate in programming and software engineering. And the plan was to like get my IT diploma, then go to the UK and finish up and get another degree. So I have two degrees. So that was the plan. That was the 411. So this thing just came along about going to the US. And I'm like, and the US embassy stamp my passport. I was so, it was a perplexing situation for me because I had spent seven good years seven years instead of five i was meant to be done with school a long time ago instead of five i ended up spending seven good years in college where I, and i thought am i going to just throw it all away because i wanted to pass my exams so bad it was just the last semester in school i wanted to pass my exams so bad like so 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 bad then god just said you know what just go with what is happening so i had to make time to reading for my exams, going back and forth to the embassy for them to fix this paperwork, get that paperwork, for me to go back to school. I had practicals, so I had to cut, I had to take care of animals, like it was my practical year. I had to take care of this animal and study at the same time. And like, if you don't, if you're not there with your animal, like who's going to take care of it? I had other people on my team working with me. Thank God I was not doing this alone. Like I had other people on my team working with me and People were, I mean, people were already angry that I was spending so much time in Lagos. Like, I was going back and forth, going back to the embassy. And doing, I wasn't telling, it was only my close friend I knew. So I was just doing all these things at the same time. And God was like, it's okay, it's fine. Like, I could not really study my exams, my final exams. Really, I didn't, I did not get those grades I wanted to get. But like I said, God was moving in a certain way and I had to go with it. So, like I said, so it came 2015. The... The, the, we finished our exam that afternoon or that morning. As soon as I finished my exam, I had to pack my bags and head to the airport and go come here. And that was I like, I had a deadline to be in the States. Like if I had not been in the States, I would have lost my application. So like I had to, so I did that and that was how I came here. So like I said, when I was young, I had this dream, like when I was less than 13, and I said, I wanted to do things in different parts of the world. When I was young, I had dream of like, I wanted to sing with several musicians and be an artist. And, and God led me through those. I mean, God, there was a manifestation of the will of God throughout all of those things. And I will not lie, there were days of prayers and fasting. There were days of trying to finish the Bible in a year trying to know the will of God because I always I look at my coming here and I said like knowing the will of God like I say like coming to America like um I tell people like I see it as Abraham being called out from his own family or sometimes I see it as Nehemiah being taken to Babylon and Nehemiah coming back to his um to his country or I see it as Ezra you know I connect it with I see like whatever that's going to happen to me I must see it's happening in the Bible and I know what God is doing so that's why I'm like finish the Bible in a year know what God is doing in your life so back in America here, I think the video is already really long. I wanted to share a lot. I want to share a lot of testimonies here in America. So real quick, I got my own apartment. I got my own car. I got my own job. Um, one of the biggest testimony is this. Um, I said one of the biggest testimony that happened to me last year was last year was i said so i was going to nigeria so i try to go to nigeria every year so i was going to nigeria and my plane was going to go through london so i told god i'm like god you know i want i want to go and see my family there because it was 13 years ago we me and my mom my dad my brother i mean me and my brothers sorry me and my brothers went to go and see our uncle in london so like i was like I have, like with the plane going through there, I was like, I want to just be nice. I just said like in my heart, like, you know, there's a difference between prayer and desires. You know, prayer, you're so purposeful. The thing about prayer is we, when you pray, you, you make it logical. Like I'm praying for a job, you know, I'm praying for a job, you know, I'm praying, I'm praying for, a, for a car. I'm praying for your wife. I'm praying for a promotion. It's awesome. But the Bible is, talks about prayers. It's like ask and you shall receive. It's more like prayer. But in the book of Psalms, it said, God will grant us the desires of our hearts. 
we do not see our desires most of the time. We just desire in our heart. Like you're just tired and you're just, you desire like, ah, if I could just get a really, really cold drink. You know, really cold that is sweet and nice. With, you know, the good movie on, with good food. You know, that's a desire. Like if I could just marry a good girl, that's uh, be my wife. Oh, if I could just get a job that pays me 10 million. You know, it's a desire. Or if I could just travel the world like I'm seeing on TV right now. It's a desire. It's just in there. You do not usually pray about those things because it's one of all. You don't want to spend energy on something you're not like, you don't feel. It's just a desire. And the, but it's some, I can't remember Psalm 46. I really, I encourage, when, when I was a leader of Inspire, I usually pull, like one of my guys who was trying to get into college, I was like telling, or into university, I told him, Use this scripture for the rest of your life. When you delight yourself in the Lord, he will grant you the desires of your heart. Because he was trying to get into college and I said, work hard for God. Write the music. Do this and that and God will manifest in your life. So like, so, um, like I said, desires of my heart. So I just desired like my plane. It was just a layover. It was meant to be like a stopover that I would stop in London and just connect to another flight and go to Nigeria. I'm like, and I had family there. And I just wanted to just stop by and just, you know, just say hi. But God just did it. So my plane was meant to go through Canada to London, then to Nigeria. So through Canada, I'm like, I also desired in my heart, like, you know, like if I could just like, even for five minutes, just because I've never been to Canada before. I'm like, if I could just just get down and just get out of the airport in Canada and just walk around, you know, just enjoy Canada for a minute, then hop back on my plane. You know, it was just a desire. You don't write those kind of things as a prayer point. Like, you know, we write logical things, things we are going through. So this was, I enjoyed, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this when God, Holy Spirit ministered to me what desires really mean. Desires, we don't pray about them. It's up to God to answer them. So I was in Canada. So what happened before I got to Canada? I live in here in my flight to take over from here. There was a there was a weather disruption. Like the weather was bad. It was foggy. It was horrible. The plane could not leave until like I was meant to leave in the morning. I ended up leaving at night, and I just trusted. And I did not see it as an attack from the devil. I just see I'm so close. What is the benefit of being a strong Christian with God? Like you do not. Everything is not not the attack of the devil. Like even when you see some things that as attacks, you just know that your God is too big for that thing to be to just remain an attack. You're just like, eh, devil, you're just stupid. You know, I don't care. You know, like, like I don't really spend time rebooking the devil like except when the devil is just stupid and brings stupid thoughts into my mind i'm like that is not god that is not the spirit of god this is the spirit of the devil i rebook you in jesus name so it happened that it, it, the weather was so bad i was meant to leave in the morning i ended up leaving in the evening then i missed my when i got to canada i missed my flight going to london so i got there and the people there my um the people, the airline that was taking care of me, that I mean, that was meant to connect me, said, "Hey, do you want? I mean, like, we can just take care of you. We can put you in a hotel, so you connect to your flight the next morning." The lady that was, I was even talking to, was like, "She was like, where are you going to?" I said, "Nigeria." She said, "Man, Nigeria. It's so hard to find. Fl I mean, to connect flights going to that place." But you know what? She just said, "Give me a minute," and she was hitting her computer and like. She said, she now said something that shocked me. She said, who are you? Like, like, who are you? Like, what is it with you that I can be able, I can find your flight so quickly. Like the last time I was meant to help someone connect a flight, it was so hard. You had to spend about a day or two in the airport trying to just connect a flight to the country. She said, who are you? Like, you, I can connect a flight for you tomorrow morning by 6 or 5 a.m. Like, who are you? I'm like, I'm a Christian. She said, she said something funny. She's like, I should have married you. You're so lucky. <laughs> and I'm like, no, I'm a Christian. And I give her a tract. And I was like, Jesus loves you. I like to like take my tracks everywhere so I can fulfill the gospel. It's a tricky way of fulfilling the gospel. I always say this to myself, like, go into the world and preach the gospel. I may not have all the money in the world to like fly everywhere. But like when my plane was like going to different parts of the world, stopping here and there i was like Yo, you know just drop my tracks so i can just fulfill all righteousness and like i preach the gospel in every part of the world you know when i could so my plane so i was like when I, my plane was also coming through germany and all that i was like yeah i preached the gospel in germany i feel so excited so like i was going through um 
um, what's it called, Canada. And the girl was like, okay, you know what? We're going to put you in a hotel room. We will, this was the part that shocked me. We'll call the limousine service to come and take you to your hotel. They called their, it was like a really nice SUV, like really, really nice. So they took me to the hotel room. And I was like, okay, I got to the hotel room. I was like, you know what? I prayed to God. This is one thing I always tell myself, like when God answers your prayers, passion, I mean, like you see God manifest. I just say, like, why don't you just fulfill the list by yourself? Like, I was tired. I was, it was long hours of waiting. My plane had already, my, um, what's the word? They already dropped me at the hotel room. And I'm like, would I just waste my time here? Like, let me get out. It was around 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. at night. So I was just in the hotel room. I'm like, I told God I want to go to Canada and I'm in Canada. You know, something has to happen. So I got out of my hotel room. I'm like, I walked the streets of Canada around 2, 3 a.m. There was a place still open that I could go and eat. I went there, I sat down when I ate, and I'm like, boom, I'm in Canada. Like, God had already took me to the hotel room. It was up to me to get out and manifest and enjoy the desires of my heart. I just got out, went there. I think I give a track to someone, you know, I just love giving tracks out, like to just preach that gospel, you know, I fulfilled my quota. So I just like, so I went there, I ate something, I went to my room, I only got like two, three hours rest. Then again, they had to pick me up from the hotel and take me back to the airport. I'm like, see all this VIP treatment in the name of God. And like I had less than a hundred dollars in my account after all these things were just happening to me. So I went to... So they took me, like I went to Canada, then I enjoyed, like I said, I enjoyed Canada for like five minutes. At least I've gone there. I've been there, Toronto, Canada. So like, so I went to, um, um, what's the word? So the airport, it, it dropped, I mean, they dropped me there. I mean, at the airport and all that. So it was like, okay, nice. I'm like, so what's going to happen in London? You know, I don't know. We'll see what God will do. So I went, so I flew so we connected, we flew, so I flew from Canada to London. So when I got to London, I was now running. I was like, man, I got to, I have to connect my flight to Nigeria. You know, I was looking for everything. I was just walking up and down and I found myself in the wrong spot. Like I just found myself in the wrong spot. I found myself just somewhere else. I just, I ended up, I cut the long story short. I ended up with immigrations. So immigration looked at my passport and was like, oh, you missed your flight. And I'm like, yes, I missed my flight again. So um, then I said, um, because in Canada, you could use your American documents to just go to Canada and just come back. It's free there. I mean, it's the same same people. But in Europe, it was another entire, it's, you, don't, you just don't walk up and down like that. So immigration saw me and they were like, oh, okay, um, awesome, you know, you are here. So do you have, what's going on? So we just got talking and they just said, you know, it's fine. They just stamped my passport and said, since you're going to be here overnight, let's give you, and your plane is leaving. Like I was there around I think, I, I don't know what time it was. No, I was there around like 12 a.m., like between 12 a.m. The next flight was leaving to Nigeria from London around 6 or 7 p.m., around 6, between, no, actually, actually like 6 or 7 p.m. around that time. And I said, and they said, okay, let's just stamp your passport. And I'm like, what? So they took my passport and they stamped it with a UK visa for just a day. And I'm like, wow i i did not plan this like oh my god i was like god this is so amazing so i called my i called my uncle in london and i'm like hey uncle i'm in london and he he was retired or he's he's retired already and he was able he picked up his phone and came to pick me up he lived an hour away so i was so shocked at how god stamped my passport how family was able to be, like they did not know I was passing through. They did not even hear me at all. They did not see, I didn't tell them because I thought it would be a waste. I did not want to tell them that I was passing through because I felt it was a waste because I felt I didn't need to tell them because I'm just, my plane is just literally going to stop and I'm going to hop on another plane and just go to Nigeria. So there was no point you trying to come and see me. And literally, I didn't think, the, I mean, with immigration and things like that, they will let you see your family members in a place where you don't have a visa for. So this time I passport, he came to pick me up. I went to his house. I went to, I just saw a little bit of London, Wimbledon. I saw Chelsea Stadium. I was so excited. I'm like, I've not been here since 13 years ago. 
and I could not see family for a long time. And I saw my family and all that. Then I came to Nigeria. So, and in Nigeria, I saw my family, da, da, da. And I went, I flew through Germany. Like I said, share the gospel there, just in the airport. So I can say I've shared the gospel in Germany, went to Canada and came back to Nigeria. So these are, there's so much testimony I wish I could share. Like I just, but I just want you to take something away, which this video is going to end is you need a grip on life as a Christian. You need to wake up and God says, you're going to be a CEO in 2030 and you're working throughout the plan you are going to be this a married man in five years time and there is a plan you're going to start a business you're going to start a company you're going to work in this place you're going to preach the gospel just something just something and you don't need to let it dwell on human strength alone you need to have a result like in life, like in, when you're in school, the, the, this is where humanity always stops. We always stop the process of life when we're done with college, most of the time or high school. Like from primary one to nursery one or from middle school to high school, you know, what, you know you're moving on in life. You know you're moving on. And when you're not moving on, you know something's wrong and we need to do something about it. But once you're done with college, everything just stops. Like what are you moving through? What process are you going through? Okay. I was done with college in 2010. What's next? How am I going to get a car? How am I going to get a house? Okay, how am I going to build this money and build that business? God has a plan. But are we listening to him? Are we going through the process? Are we, are we just listening to him? It's not about money. It's not about sex. It's not about fame. It's not about fortune. It's about God. Like I said, I left... The world, I will never forget, 2010. Left the world alone in 2010. Left every single thing to just chase God. And my life began to boom, blow some. Like, blow some. Like, so I just want to just pray for every single person that has dreams, goals, and ambitions. Like, and if you feel like you just don't feel anything heavy in your life, but you just feel like you need to go, you need to be moving on in life. You, you just need to be getting to that next stage. I pray that everything works out, but I'll tell you the one, two, three things I did. Read the Bible. You may not, you may not read a lot every day, but just pick, find a way to finish it up. I use audio Bible. Audio Bible, like when I read sometimes, like Leviticus, Deuteronomy, all those places, they're so hard to read sometimes. I just use the audio Bible to just catch up. Read the Bible. Number two, pray. Just pray, 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 pray. Let God know your heart. Number three, worship God. I take like on my days off, I try to find times I'm off where I can spend f crazy hours. I don't want to say hours that will scare you and make you feel incompetent as a Christian. But I spend crazy enormous hours in prayer. I mean in worship to God. I'll just let the song play. I'll listen to sermons of different preachers on YouTube. For like, I listen to it all the time. I don't like. I was it was so scary. I was listening. I was I was talking to someone here. This is this was an American here, and I thought I thought you know everyone was on. There's this thing called Netflix. Everyone does it. So she was a medical student, and I was so shocked on the answer she gave me. And I'm like, Are you watching Netflix or what are you watching? Because I just wanted to know what was going on in the early life. And she said, I don't watch those things. I said, What do you do? What do you do then? She said, I listen to sermons. There's a revival going on with people who have decided to serve God. Young people, I see young people who just listen to sermons. People who turn the TV off. We are done. Like I need, I tell, like I need, I need my life to be better than the normal. I am urging for greatness. I want more. Sermons, worship God. Like this, you need. We need that. We need that extra spice in our life. Because if you do, this is where we all get frustrated as Christians. Like. Oh, I serve God. I'm a Christian a long time and this is not happening to me. They want to now begin to do it like the way of the world. The way of the world, they sell their souls to the devil. They are all cult. They do weed. They do drugs. They do strip bars. Like girls are selling their body to make money. There's a huge temptation to do it like the way of the world. When you get frustrated with your Christian faith and you're not getting goals, you become so frustrated and you just feel like, what the heck? I've been doing this thing my whole life. I'm, why am I not getting results? Like I said, finish the Bible, pray, fast. I make fasting once a week for me.
just once a week. It can be 12. It, it doesn't have to be 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. The regular 12 hours. It can just be 12. Just just like I do it from like maybe like when I would sleep at night to all around 12 p.m., 1 p.m. Once a week when I have the strength. And when I don't have the strength, sometimes I do I do um, t 6 to 6. 66 I used to do that, that too last year the last two years I've been doing the first seven days of every month I used to fast first seven days, but when work got tedious and I had to work I mean a season of my life where I have to work where God has laid down the full plan of my life And I have to work so I cannot spend a lot of time fasting and praying and just wanting to hear the Spirit of God Now God has manifested and I'm in the working phase of my life. So I need the energy to work so you just need to understand your seasons and give your all. Like I said, the time of when it was my band, it was the embassy, and I was just giving my all in each situation. I will not lie to you. I was being laughed at and mocked at. Like, I was looking like crap. I looked like a piece of rag sometimes in college. I wasn't spending money on myself looking good and, you know, looking fancy and nice because I was spending my money on my dreams. I was spending my time on my dreams, on the goals and the ambitions God had given me. It was so expensive traveling three hours from school to, 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 from my school, from my school to, to, um, to my to see my band on weekends. It was so expensive. Those were things I was going through. So, like, Spend your time. You may lose friends. You may gain some. Your friends will change in every season of your life. The friend that I was with, where someone wrote my name down for the embassy application, was not my friend like the next two or three years. It changed entirely. It changed entirely. So, like I said, read your Bible, pray fast, share the gospel. Share the gospel. Take time to talk to someone you don't know about the gospel. I started little by online. I like to tweet, write on Facebook. <laughs> I like to write on Facebook. I, <laughs> I like to write one of my classmates. You see what I'm saying? Like people will watch your testimony. I'm glad like people like one of my friends just wrote right now. Like, yeah, I looked like a rag. I looked like a piece of rag back in school. Like he just wrote it right now. Like, so one of... One of the things was like one of the things like um, you have to do in life is that you have to you, you just have to enjoy it with God. Just keep praying. Share the gospel. Tell people about Jesus. Just God wants people to tell. God wants us to tell others about him. Tell people about Jesus. And yeah, and give. Put your money down. Now, this is the tricky thing about giving. I'm not saying give like, it's good to give in church. It's awesome, perfect, great. Give, sow the seed in church. But give to your dreams. Matthew chapter 10 verse 39 says, They that lose themselves will find themselves. If God has said you should go to school and get a master degree program in something, it will cost you everything. It will cost you money. If God says start a little business, it will cost you everything. It will cost you money. Your mates may be buying cars, houses, and everything. Just put yourself in that thing. Like I sold myself in my band, my music. I did not know it was where I would get my connections from. I thought it would be my schoolwork. So whatever God has put in your life, give yourself totally to it, whatever it is, and seek God. Like I told you, I lost myself. Like I left school when, during the time of that convention, we were meant to be in school as students. There was actually, I missed a week. There was a two-week course we were meant to do. I missed one of the week. I mean, one of the week. It was meant to be two. I ended up spending one. I spent one in camp and one with the students. And one of my classmates warned me, said, if you had not come for the last week, you would have retaken the whole course next year again. Which was a long, it was a long period of work. So I just want to encourage us all, like, hear the voice of God. Pray, worship God, read your Bible. Just want to know him. Want to hear him. Next week, I'll release the prayer points on Friday. Like, let's just pray for the manifestation of the Spirit of God in our lives. So I just want to pray with us. I've been speaking for a long time. God bless you. Thank you for hanging out with me. I love you guys. Hi from Lekon from Turkey. I know you traveled to Turkey. Congratulations. God bless you. That's another classmate of mine who traveled out. God bless you. So I just want to just pray for every single person. Like, God, 
um, I just want to thank you. I thank you for every single person who has listened. Who has listened to the testimony of what you have done in my life. Because you're about... I know you organized this whole thing because you're about to do something to in their lives. God, I'm praying that you just manifest in them. That you show them how to be passionate. How to just lose themselves in you. How to trust you knowing that you are God. That you have a reason, you have a plan, you know what is going on in your heart. Lord, you have sown seeds of dreams, of visions, you 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 have sown you have sown a lot of things in people's hearts. And the devil is just trying to rip them apart from their heart, from their hands. The, the devil is trying to take away these dreams, these visions, these goals, this all these things from them, Lord. I pray that you give them the grace to hold on. Please, Lord, give them the grace to hold on. Give them the grace to trust you. Give them the ability to know you more. Lord, please, let them know you more and cause all their dreams to come to reality. Blow their mind. Grant them the desires of their heart. Oh, Lord, grant them the desires of their heart. Let them know you more. Let them know you more. Let them trust you more. Bless them. Bless them with with joy everlasting lord let them not leave you let them not be frustrated as christians because lord it gets so easy to be frustrated as christians and we ask ourselves why are my dreams not coming through why am i just stuck in one spot forever why am i here oh lord so god just help them oh lord give them the grace to know you more in jesus name i pray amen Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for answered prayers. I pray for every single person that has listened, that has watched. Lord God, help them. Help them. Help them, oh Lord, that everything goes well. In Jesus' name, I pray. I just, I just feel this heavy burden in my heart for frustrated Christians. Because I know what it means to be frustrated as a Christian. That you just be stuck in one spot and you keep on asking yourself, that God, what is going on? I just feel this heavy burden for frustrated Christians. Lord, I pray. I pray for all the Christians who have just been frustrated. They are tired. They have been serving you. They know the name of Jesus. They are thinking of turning the other way and just be like everyone else. Lord, they have been frustrated. Oh, Lord. God, I just pray that you have mercy in your core of your heart. That you just have mercy on people and have mercy on every single one, oh Lord. And just heal them. Heal them of this desire to just move on in life. Heal them. I soak them with the blood of Jesus wherever they are, wherever part of the world they are. Lord, keep them with your grace. Keep them with your mercy. That they will not remain frustrated forever. That we pray Jesus into the hearts of many who are non-Christians and they just want a better life. Lord, keep them, protect them, guide them, oh Lord. Lord, and I pray that everything goes on well. Thank you for answering prayers. Thank you for all what you have done. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Amen. I love you guys. Bye. See you later. Thank you for hanging out with me for a long time. God bless.